Now to security matters, five more victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have been freed and now united with their families. This latest development was confirmed by Mamutuko, who has been the lead negotiator. The victims have spent more than four months in captivity. Among those freed is Mustafa Omar, an associate professor of medical biochemistry at the Usman Danfudio University, Sokoto State. It is still unclear if ransom was paid for the release of the victims, just like those earlier released after family members confirmed that they paid at least 100 million naira to secure the release of their loved ones. With the latest released by the terrorists, the total number of freed victims is now 29 out of the 63 passengers kidnapped, with 34 others still in captivity. I literally was the, the medical doctor on camp. I was treating the captives as well as um, um, the bandits, or I would say Boko Haram, Boko Haram members. Um, there wasn't medication. To be very frank with you, I we, we had on, on the radio somebody was claiming that um, they would bring medication whenever, whenever yeah, it was needed. There, there wasn't any medication on camp. I mean, we could we could go days. There was a day that a particular lady who had malaria. So um, malaria, you could treat malaria with a one with with, with one thousand naira. But this lady literally was going into coma because there wasn't medication for her. I mean, there wasn't medication for her malaria. To security matters, let's remind you that five more victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have been freed and now united with their families. The latest development was confirmed by Mamutuko, who has been the lead negotiator. The victims have so far spent more than four months in captivity. And to help us talk about this and other security issues in the country is Director General, International Institute of Professional Security, Tony Ofoyeto. Good to have you join us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So in, in four months, um, out of 63 uh, kidnapped pa passengers, um, 29 of them have been released. We're not clear um, whether how many of them paid ransom. At least a particular family has said they paid 100 billion naira. Um, it is not clear if the others paid. But as we speak, about 34 others are still in captivity, and that's after four months. Um, what, what's your thoughts on this, and what's the implication of this for those who are still left in captivity? Well, um, thank you very much once again. The, I think I'll start from the last question. Uh, the implication is that um, the business of terrorism is thriving. And um, the dominion of the government shows uh, the level of helplessness. Um, yes, of course, the argument at times is let us prevent collateral damage and all those stuff like that. Now, what you think as a vulnerability is now a strength to your adversary. Um, one of the things I expected that the government would have done by now is even if you want to prevent you want to prevent collateral damage, I expected that by now the government would have been able, if they are sincere about releasing these people, if the environment had been cuddled off to the extent that um, they find it difficult to go outside and buy food or replace their supplies or medicals and the like, you will see that by now it would have been a different ballgame entirely. But obviously, the government has not done anything. I, I, I stand to be corrected. I'm not convinced that the government has done anything. So now the families have to be raising money to be releasing their loved ones bit by bit and all those stuff like that. And the implication of that is that it's encouraging further, encouraging kidnapping all over the country. That is why you see that the business of kidnapping is thriving. Recently, there was a bill, a proposed bill, uh, to criminalize the art of ransom payment. Now, but before you can talk about criminalizing the act of ransom payment, what has the government been able to do? Now you have a situation where the police is busy mopping out arms from the hands of legally, uh, those that legally acquired arms for their own self-defense, yet they are not providing the required security for citizenry. Now you look at the roads are not there, they are not safe. The aviation is as good as almost dead. The rail now that we are talking about is also another calamity. Then the question is that where do we move? How do we move in doing our businesses? So it has holistic implication on almost every mm. aspect of our economy. You are talking mm. about the depreciation of the dollar. Everything that we are talking about, the economy of Nigeria today, is all nexus towards insecurity in this country. 
And that is why the government must put security as a first priority. If you look at for the past five years or six years, you are talking of a budget of almost seven trillion that have been invested in the security of the nation. And you and I cannot see it. So that means that those that are the aim of affairs, they are supposed to now do what is called a proper political will. Bring out a proper mm. political will. And, and, to and to let's get to that, that political elements. will. Um, because, again, one of the implications, I, I just wanted to quickly mention that because we were talking about the implication. Um, one wonders what will happen to families who are not able to raise this money to release their loved ones and what will happen to their loved ones. But let's get to the, the issues around political will. The president has now said that in a statement that was released that he has given full freedom to security forces to deal with this issue. Um, I, I want to ask you what you understand by, because you are, I mean, you are in the security sector. When, when you hear the word full freedom, what does that mean to you? And then the president is also asking for international collaboration as well. I, I just wanted to speak on, on, on those two issues. Well, when it comes to government, I think playing to the gallery should not be part of the game. Um, giving full scale leave to security agencies to go all out against the criminal, nobody will move an inch. And I repeat, no service chief will move an inch because it is not done on media. It is done via order, specific instruction to specific agency. It's not on the pages of newspaper. It's not on whether electronic, social media. It's not even through interviews, not at all. I can assure you that if the service chiefs get the necessary matching order to move ahead and do what they ought to do. You will see the result because they will protect their pot of soup. They know that now they have a standing order, written, a order well written and signed by the appropriate authority. If it's Mr. President, he gives the NSA the order or the DSSDG. They, they just give all the service chiefs such order and the service chiefs give all the theater commanders such order. It will trickle down within a, within a trickle of an hour and you will see the result. So it's not a matter of that, the Mr. President. Mr. President has given several orders, several orders of this magnitude, of what relevance has it been? Because regimental services work based on written orders, you know, signal, and that's what they consider. If they did not receive that signal, official signal, they're not going to do anything. The question is, have they received that official signal from the necessary authority to do that? If the answer is in, is in the negative, then Mr. President should do the needful. If he does the needful, you will, you and I will see the result because I can bet you that all the service should, they will defend their pot of soup. Mm. And I can also assure you that our boys on the field, they are capable to wipe out all these miscreants. You call bandits, you call headsmen, or you call Boko Haram. They are nothing compared to our security boys, mm. but they have not gotten that required order from the president as it ought to be gotten. Well, and that's my own position. We will see how this um, this full freedom works in the, in the coming days and coming weeks. I wish you could touch on the issue of international collaboration, but the time is up. Thank you so much for talking to us, Director General, it's International Institute of Professional Security, Tony Ofoyeto.